Hello folks, back again, uh, this time with a bit of a Johanna style barn stroke lab update type of uh, video for you. Uh, there's been quite a few things going on here um, as well as the Red Arrow project so figure we'd give you a little bit of a tour of the bench here, show you what we've got going on and uh, see where things lead after that. So as always, don't watch this. All right, so as you know, we're working away on the Red Arrow here. Uh, mostly kind of metal work and stuff like that in the former engine compartment. Uh, but we'll get to that um, in due course. But first of all, did a little bit of a little bit of a reorganization, small bit here around the workbench. Because uh, I've got a lot of reverse engineering projects lined up. Um, I'm going to say for the next couple of months, or probably even more, depending on how things go. Um, so first of all, most interestingly, as you know, we got our Gen 1 6.6 kilowatt MGZS charger functioning. And... Now we have the second generation from the ZS, uh, which has both DC-DC converter and uh, V2L capability uh, built in. So this will be uh, quite an interesting project. Um, I would ask if anyone has a, I think it's, um, from model year either 2021 or 2022 onwards mg um vehicle most likely the zs but i'd maybe fitted to different mg vehicles also uh, if you do have one of these chargers in your vehicle and you are willing to do some uh can logs for me that would be very much appreciated and uh, can get in touch or leave a, co a comment below because this guy um, I think would be quite useful for the conversion commu community to have um, working. Now you see this one's been slightly damaged. Uh, it was in a crashed vehicle uh, so I got this quite uh, cheaply. So I'm going to have a connector coming in hopefully tomorrow and we'll be able to start powering this guy up and uh, seeing what we can make happen. So uh, next up here then on our um, engine or yeah engine stand is the BMW 330e uh, gearbox. Now this one is going to be um, a project that we're developing a open source gearbox controller for and we're going to be running the motor because there's an ele electric motor in the front of this gearbox and we're going to be using this um, sorry it's a bit of a mess here we're going to be using this Nissan Leaf Gen 3 inverter to run that uh, motor and this is going to form the drivetrain uh, for our second E39 uh, Mossy Yacht project. So up on the bench then, we've also got this guy, which is most of a traction motor and transaxle assembly from a Volkswagen e-Golf. We've got the matching inverter. Uh, let me get you a part number for that guy. There you go. Got the e-Golf um inverter and got our connector on here i've been working out the connections so we're going to be attempting to get this motor and this inverter here uh, running on the bench as well um we're going to go down the road hopefully of running it via can uh so again we're back into the whole can logs thing again um 
with this guy so if not if we fail horribly on that well then we'll go with an open inverter replacement pcb and quite interestingly this guy also has a built-in uh, dc dc converter here so again quite useful components here they're not just doing one thing here so for example here with the e-golf We've got an inverter and a DC DC in this one box. And here with the MG, the newer MG charger, we've got a charger, 6.6 .6 kilowatts, and a DC DC converter in there as well. So you're seeing a lot more of this kind of into integrating different functions into components. Now, the one that I'm actually most interested in is uh, again sorry about the light here it's as usual my <laughs> the sun doesn't want to um um cooperate this is a toyota prius gen 4 uh trans axle uh, i've been sitting on this now for quite some time actually it's been here um i think it's the 1nm am i right i don't know if i will be able to see that i think it's the 1nm transaxle um, and I have the drive shafts and I have the I have actually two inverters um, and fortunately also got the the connector plug for the low voltage on this inverter now this transaxle and this inverter here came out of a Toyota CHR and uh, I'm quite lucky in that I do have access to, I think it's a 2019 Toyota CHR. So should be able to do some CAN logs. There's the two CAN buses. Um, I think it's these two pairs here on this inverter. Um, so this is controlled not by synchronous serial like the Gen 3 and the Lexus stuff, but rather by plain old CAN bus. So we're going to see if uh, we can get this transaxle and this inverter to um, work here on the bench for us and give us another, um, another Toyota drivetrain. This is the P610 transaxle. If you want to see more detail on this, the, um, the Weber Autos uh, channel with Professor Kelly is the place to go most interesting things i guess about this trans uh, transaxle are um it's got a mechanical uh gear selector so just like the lexus stuff so there's just a cable shift um for going in and out of park and stuff like that um this also has quite a few other things that quite frankly i forget now it's been this long since i looked at it uh, but it's a good trans axle and uh, be, be useful for uh, front wheel drive applications, obviously. But the inverter mounts up here. Um, and this guy here is just bolts into the inver inverter. And uh, here you have your resolver, MG1, MG2 and so on. So I did manage to get a bit of the loom with this one quite usefully. Uh, so this is our next Toyota project. We got this guy, um, yeah, hopefully coming along soon. So I should be okay for can logs for this. As I said, I have access to one of those vehicles. So we just need to see if we can get another Toyota uh, system up and running. So on the subject of Toyota, and in particular the GS300 system here, I wanted to say a big thank you uh, to some folks in the, U the UK who have been doing some uh, in-vehicle testing uh, with this particular drive system. And apparently uh, there's been some good success recently where uh, there was a, a limit, uh, there seemed to be hitting a limit of around 30 or 35 kilowatts, something like that in uh, driving with this particular uh, system and Tom Debris went through the um, synchronous serial data 
and identified the battery discharge current limits, cranked that up, and apparently then that unleashed the beast here um, in a particular BMW a Z3 over in the UK. So that now is uh, working quite well. Um, so we're now into a much better uh, situation with the GS300 system for use in rear, rear wheel drive vehicles. So I've had quite a few questions uh, recently about the Muscovo and uh, haven't done a whole lot over the winter with it but uh, have been making some little um, inroads here and hopefully sometime later this year we'll actually have this motor uh, running and spinning wheels and to that end we have been doing a little bit of work on our drive shafts so this is the driver's side uh, drive shaft and we've got Volvo here on this end for the outboard and we've got model 3 for the inboard coupled up with a 3d printed uh, shaft coupler in PC carbon fiber now I know everyone's gonna get excited and be screaming at their computers Damien you can't do that it will explode the Moskva will melt a hole through the Earth's crust no it's okay folks this is purely just to ensure that I get my drive shaft length correct make sure everything's lining up and maybe I'll spin the wheels here just off the ground with it just again to be certain everything is where I need it to be uh, before we remake this out of uh, steel sweat fit it and weld it on there so that's the plan this is as I say driver side done so gonna pop that in fairly soon and we'll uh, see how that looks and then we got to do uh, passenger side and then we'll be able to see um, about getting some power into this baby and doing a bit of a wheel spin here so Moscow certainly not forgotten about model 3 drive units certainly not forgotten about uh, we're just getting getting through as many bits and pieces here as we can but this vehicle uh, is definitely going to be doing something uh, this year with our 3d printed shaft coupler as you can see there there's quite a varied lot going on it's not complete uh, there's lots of other designs and developments going on in the background as well but if i try to uh keep up with all those uh we'd be here for another three hours not good so Lastly then, just to remind folks, if there is anyone with an MG vehicle that has one of those newer chargers in it, and you are willing to take some can logs for me from the charger can bus, that would be very much appreciated. So, that's about it. Um, I'm going to get started on all of these uh, projects here. There's no particular order, I'll be kind of just going around them as bits of components and hardware software and bits of, you know, of information become available to me and we'll hopefully get all of these bits up and running so as always don't forget to dislike don't share this crap with your friends because they won't be your friends anymore then unsubscribe if you're accidentally subscribed for any reason and uh do check out the links in the description for Open Inverter and GitHub and uh, whatever else. And there's some links in there to other people's uh, YouTube channels that are much more interesting than mine. And I also just put the links for PayPal and Patreon in there so you can avoid them. So, that's it. We're going to wrap it up. We'll see you next time. And... Um, until then, happy EV component hacking. <laughs>